Yeah. So I've now upgraded my camera to Mark IV. But then I had ooh, left over this Mark III base. And it's got a nice little um, uh, rack and pinion gear on it. So, well, the rest of the camera is not that hard, is it, right? Yeah. So it's just the front stand, which is like two, 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 two pieces of plastic and a board with a hole in it, which I don't even need it to move because it's in a large back, right? Again, in the back, a nice Again, piece of plastic that nice fits, piece of plastic um, fits the, head the, um, the head on it. And I just, in fact, and I just, you saw the you know before the you saw the Ikea curtains before right? the Ikea curtains that, that, um, you know, that, with my um, air you know with my right? air conditioner mm -hmm. well it turns out well it turns right? out that makes really right? good um, that makes bellows. really good um, bellows. <laughs> <laughs> I understand one of those I understand one of those I started folding bellows I started folding bellows and made lovely bellows and made lovely bellows and they're as good as the original intrepid right right what what did I say about the intrepid bellows. No, no, the intrepid bellows no, no, are the intrepid bellows okay. are I mean, they're, they're okay. I mean, sometimes they're, they're, they're bit, sometimes they're creaky, bit right? Right? creaky. Right? Um, I've never had a hole in them. Um, I've never had a hole in them, and, and, and they, they um, fold relatively flat. flat. Fold relatively flat. But, but my bellows are good enough. My bellows are good enough. My enlarger, not my enlarger together. I kind of bodge together. It's a plastic and stuff, right? Plastic, and I could put that on the intrepid. And I could put that on the intrepid. Just the same. Just the same. Because basically, I follow their. Because basically, I follow their pattern. What's um, what's it like in like your respective countries regards getting hold of uh, like secondhand equipment? Like in the UK, thirty-five mil yeah. medium format and yeah. are just everywhere on eBay. They're really easy to get hold of. Um, like is that sort of market there in Germany and Hong Kong? Um, area, this area here. It's it's about fifteen foot wide by about thirty foot long. That's at least twice the size of a typical Hong Kong apartment. Yeah. Right. Most people don't have full space. Um, and I'll just keep it in an in, 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 in industrial unit, unit like, like fifteen years. years. But, but um, that's, that's uh, cost less than the car, car, car rent, 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 basically. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. yeah. But the, the thing, thing is, the thing, thing is, no one here's got the space. space. You know, you, you go, go to someone's house and you'll see, you know, cupboards overhanging the, the, the foot, foot of their bed, bed because there's no space to put put a bed and cupboards in a, in their apartment. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so um, given, given that, that nobody, nobody has, has a large Hong Kong. Kong. Um, you know, you know, there are things, things that people don't own here that you might find in Germany or in the UK, like a wood chipper, a lawnmower. Um, you know, and in larger these, these things, things almost, almost nobody, nobody owns Hong Kong, Kong right? right? And that's, and that's one of the reasons, reasons why I'm, I'm, I'm keep trying, trying to make, make stupid people projects, projects like, like the, 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 uh, the, the uh, simple, simple and larger project, project. or this, 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 this light light that goes on the back, back of the uh, camera. camera because, because it's small, small, right? right? And, and they, they, they weigh, weigh about, about ooh, ha ha yeah. coke can, and they're smaller than the coke can. Yeah, yeah, and, and you can put, put that in your drawer, drawer in your camera, camera bag, bag. And, and, and you can take, take a whole day and, 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 uh, and uh, make make friends with Calvin. You know, like with that thirty-five mil and larger that you've made, it's it's superb because the only extra bit you need is the top bit. So if you're buying, if you own that camera or you're looking to buy one anyway, you can do it all with one yeah, yeah. Um Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess it's a bit of a fact, but you can't do that. There are very few cameras you can't do that with. Most cameras you can. Right, as long as it's it's got a right, right. Like, a bulb made on it, or it's got some sort of manual mode on mm -hmm. it, then it's fine, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You you want? You want a, I mean, you I mean, could, you could do like a, a four second exposure, exposure and another, another four, but it'll bounce, right? So you want bulb mode or key mode? And, and the back of those up to see the stuff that's happening. That's almost, almost every, every camera, camera in the world. world. So, so all, all I did is this this new head, head is just do the same thing as Trepid did. Right? Right? Um, but, but with um, but, but on a smaller, smaller scale. scale. And, and for, for a lot less money. money. So, so I, I think, think my the, the, the light costs uh, about, about two quid. quid. Or about, you know, two, two, two and, and a half euros. euros. Right? Um, and then there's about a pound worth of plastic, plastic in there. Maybe if that. So the whole whole project is like is like a three pound sterling project, and then you have you have a lot of larger. 
it's a, a coffee stand as well, isn't it? Like I've been looking at, um, like a lot of people are starting to scan their negatives with uh, DSLRs, aren't they? And it's like, ideally, you need a coffee stand to do that. So it's like, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so they, they, they talk, talk coffee stands being bought up on eBay. eBay. Um, and, and like, like you know, the, 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 the size, size of stands, stands are, they're, they're either, either very, very, very cheap, cheap or very, very, very expensive. expensive. For, for the same, same reasons. Reason. It's, it's, it's either something, something like, like, like um, 1,500 euros, euros or it's like, like 80, 80 euros. euros. Right. It's, it's, it, it's, 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 you know what I mean, right? 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 I'm, I'm going to so, um, I'm I'm get on eBay later and get one in because it's, I think it's the sort of thing that in six months' time, they'll be very difficult to get hold of. As people start to realise that's this is a, you could really um, spend time on eBay and wait till one comes up cheap. Yeah, don't go and buy the you know the the the, the, the MSRP retail price. Okay, all darkroom stuff is potentially available for like uh, less than a tenth of its original price. And because if you actually try to sell them, it's and that's why, I, like, when people see yeah. my equipment, I'm, they're just like, "Oh, this that costs so much." And it's like, I just spent a, I spent years basically on eBay collecting all this because mm. I refuse to pay the, the prices that a lot of people try and sell the stuff for. And so like, that's ridiculous. I'm not paying that. <laughs> so yeah, it just it takes time. If you if, if, um, if, if you're, you're careful, careful like, like, like for, for example, example, my, my first, first larger was, was, was a was a, a, um, was a dirt dirt dirt. Um, I think it's like a 301 or something. And I bought that for five Hong Kong dollars um, in, the in the jumble sale. sale. Five Hong Kong dollars is about 50 cents. Right? right? So my first large was 50 pence. And, and, and it, it's, it's not impossible to replicate. <laughs> right? So, right? so, so that's why I'm doing this competition, competition for like, like a, you know, cheap, cheap art. So I want to make people understand. understand. You, don't you don't need to spend, spend you know, know Cars worth, worth money, money to get, get a nice larger. Mind you, my Kaiser, which, which, which I, I paid, paid, I think it was something like 4,000 euros for, for. Okay. New, New from, from the factory. factory. You know, yeah. and then, then I go, I go on eBay, eBay and I find them for like, you know, like, 100 euros. Euro. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> so I'm like, oh, God. Right? right? So, so, I learned my lesson. Um, and then most of the stuff is coming either to myself or it's coming second hand. It's that. The old dilemma, isn't it, where you're weighing up like time and cost, basically. It's like if you put time into it, you can get it cheaper. But if you want it immediately, you have to just pay a premium for it. Yeah. I mean, you know, Durst do some really big and large, right? And if you're a professional, you like, you can't buy them new. You buy um, a professionally refurbished one, which is being stripped back to the bone, sandblasted, um, and then uh, re-powder coated, completely re remade fresh. Yeah. Right. So that would be the ideal for a professional. Okay. But we're not investors here, and and I don't know. I'm not making any money out of this. So so we have to make everything as cheap as possible. It's like all my furniture. I've got it all um, ex demo from Ikea. Right. <laughs> you can't make it any cheaper than that. Right. What's it? Sorry. Thomas, what enlarge have you got? Sorry. What enlarge have you got? It is a Durst um, N605. It can go, go up to 6655, I guess. Like, like it is. It's kind of nice because it has a negative tray here. Yeah. Like, like where, where you can, can and, and you can see this, but you, you can, can have these things, things where you can narrow it down, down to, to your uh, negative phase, basically. So you, you can, can use, use the same trace for 6 by 6 and then for 35 mm. And you just, I think you have to change something in the head. Like, like this is a completely major lens when you change changing formats. Um, but, but otherwise, otherwise it's, it's just, just a no, no real rules. Thing, thing, it just, just works, works. And it was really cheap. Like, I don't know. I think I got it together with all the, all the stuff like the trays and like red light and like even a, like packs of like expired paper for like hundred euros oh, or something. Good. So, what? Well, um, so the the um the negative carrier's got 
two pieces of glass that it sits between, yeah? Yeah, that, that's a bit annoying about it, the glass. Like, I'm not sure if I like it or not, because sometimes you get, like, these Newton rings if, if it's not perfectly flat, and you have to clean it really hard, and then basically you have these things that you can slide in from the side. So oh, for, okay. I know, for 35 millimeter, you would do something like so you this. Could easily, you could easily um, do sprocket hole printing with it, though, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. It's actually cool because you can do these prints like with the black borders without like doing anything fancy on the stuff. Just open yeah. it a bit. I have a suggestion on the on the Newton ring problem. Okay, um, uh, I found that if you use a, a kind of anti-reflective, it's called anti-reflective um, glass that's used for framing um, uh, framing pictures, right? It's just mm. it's it's it's, that is exactly the same glass as is sold in, as anti Newton ring glass. Yeah. So, so my Kaiser, for example, has two nice plates of um, anti Newton ring um, uh, uh, glass on it, with the same kind of uh, lens carrier as yours. But I found the same exactly the same glass is is you know really really cheap. It'll, it'll be it'll be something like um, one euro for both pieces. Yeah. Right. So you can replace. That. You can replace your glass with um, with anti ring glass for almost no money at all. Yeah, usually it's not such a big deal. Like you see it directly, like on on your on the table, and then you just put it out, like do something, put it in again, and then the ring is gone. So just give it a little tap. It's not really a problem. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's really hard to tell what you have to do. Just <laughs> just I don't know. Second is try. It, is it really <laughs> obvious before you've made a print that it's showing the ring? Like, can you see them just on the inside? Yeah, yeah, you see it yeah. before doing the print. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's obvious. And do you do you shoot medium format as well? No, so far not. Like, I I went into the large format thing a bit recently. Like, I got an Intrepid, and I also have these like huge pinhole cameras. But I um, I was doing only direct positive paper in these yeah. so far, so that I don't have to deal with enlarging. And so far, I'm satisfied with that. So I don't really want to go into printing any bigger, um, <laughs> like printing from bigger negatives. Oh, it's a huge step up. I, quite early on, I decided I was going to shoot large format. So everything I got was based around like going up to four by five. But I can imagine if you're going from medium format to printing four by five, your workflow just changes. Like what you have to get for developing and for printing is just. It's completely different, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Like, I would even have to get like the stuff for developing the film. Like, it, I think it doesn't fit into my tanks, and the film is super expensive. Yeah. So, so, I don't know. I don't make any money out of that. So, I think for me, it's fine <laughs> to stick with thirty-five millimeter for for negatives, and on the bigger stuff, I just do the positive paper. How did you? How have you got on with the uh, direct positive paper? Yeah, I like it. Like it's it's quite some limitation. Like it's super low like sensitivity, mm. like ISO three or yeah. something. And the contrast is super high. Which also means like your exposure has to be spot on, otherwise like it's it's much too bright or much too dark. And it really depends on the weather, like because it's it's paper, it's like darkroom paper, just like reversed. So it's not sensitive the same to all colors. Like it's, what would you call this? Like autochromatic yeah. basically. So if you have like blue skies and sunlight, it's a totally different game than if it's cloudy or shady or something. And it's always a bit of a guessing game to get the exposure right. Yeah, I've, I've, I've tried it a bit and I've really, I've really struggled with it. I actually tried using um, flashes because I tried a couple outside and just wanted a more controlled environment. And even then, I just I, yeah. I couldn't really get anything from it. I was like, <laughs> what am I doing wrong here? Yeah. I mean, you get like some pleasant results from time to time, but it's really more like by chance and not by like crafting what you're doing there. I think actually I can get one of them.
I have. Have you seen? Do you know um? Do you know the photographer Brendan Barry? He does like huge, like he, he makes cameras out of all sorts of stuff, and he's been doing like massive mural camera obscura style prints with direct positive paper, and the results he's got he's got are just incredible. And I, like, yeah, I, I don't know how he's doing that on such a scale. It's, it's very well done. So th this is this is the one direct positive I got that I've kept because I'm like actually it's. It seems to be exposed okay. <laughs> Ish. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. But that's it. I thought at that point, I was like, right, I've spent a good half a day and got through loads of sheets on this and not really got any results. So I, I stopped at that point. <laughs> yeah. Like for me, it also feels like it's a bit in between like instant film and like actual film because you, you have only this yeah. one shot and you kind of you can develop it instantly, but not really instantly. You have to go home and put it in a yeah, development yeah. tray. Uh, so it's kind of the slower way of doing instant photography or yeah. something like this. Yeah, I agree. I wish, I wish they they could make an RC paper because then you could actually, you could take like a tank out with you and pretty much do it in like a dark bag and develop it while you're out and about. So it was more instant. But with fiber, like your your washing yeah, time is too long to do that, aren't they? Yeah, there is an RC paper. Like it's not from Ilford. It's let me just get it. Uh -huh. I can show you the the brand. Are you doing some printing, Dan? I'm just going to run a bit of a test. So it's this Imago positive paper. Can you oh, see yeah. this? And this is, I don't know if that's a proper brand or something, but it's its like sold by a company called Marco, M-A-C-O. Oh, so hold on, I've heard uh, of that. That's, you have to develop that, you have to bleach yeah. develop that though, don't you? That's a reversal paper, I think. Yeah, hang on, is, is, that, a, no, no. is that a red, red envelope? Sorry? That, that's not the red envelope stuff, right? Is it? I don't know. Like I just a, develop it like normal, and it turns out like normal. Oh, you develop it like normal? Yeah, I've got, I've got a, a, a packet of that. Sorry, I've just put this. So the one thing that's different about this paper is that it has like, like the whites are not really white. It's, it's almost like a metal finish or something. So you, um. Yeah, if you hold it against light, it's always like looking against a mirror or something okay. like it has this like metally finish, which can look okay, but scanning it is a bit problematic. Like the whites turn gray on scanning and like you have to really like look at it in proper light that it looks good. Hmm. I'm going to have to look that up. What was it called? Imago. Yeah, e I can send you like a picture later of it. It's Imago positive paper. Where where did you get that from? Um, do you know Photo Impacts? Mm. It's a German shop. They, they have a store in Berlin, but they also sell yeah. online. It's just photoimpacts.de, I guess. I don't know if they ship to the UK or not. But there's also like another shop, Marco, M-A-C-O. M -A -C -O. They also mm -hmm. sell this. I got it from there once. And they sell online. They, okay, if, uh, if Marco sells it, then um, also uh, uh, camera film photo in Hong Kong will stop. <clears throat> Sorry, what was that, Dan? Yeah, I'm just saying that if, if they if Mako sells it, then um, uh, Camera Film Photo in Hong Kong, um, who's their distributor, they they will also have it. I just found it on a place called First so, uh, Call, uh, which is based in the UK, and they've got it, and it's got zero detail. But there we go, four by five, twenty five sheets, 
for £36, so that's probably €36, Euros, isn't it, these days? Um, and it's called a high glossy on a Melanex Zebra Chrome base. Yeah, that sounds like it. Ooh, interesting. I've never seen that before. It's in stock. No, I've got to stop buying things. <laughs> I'll bookmark it. I'll bookmark uh, it. <laughs> what are you what are you printing, Dan? I'm having a quick go with the um with the new enlarger. Right. <laughs> so I'm just doing a um, I'm doing a, a test um test trip first. You can see it. Turning out okay. Tongs, but yeah, coming up all right. Oh, beautiful! Holy <laughs> shit! All right, well, that'll do. So, do you guys always do test trips first, or do you did this stuff long enough to like? know where to start with a print um let me just say it, that enlarger has never been used before mm -hmm. it's not even an enlarger itself it's a yeah um, but but if you had a like if you used like the enlarger you normally use like would you still do test strips or would you just go uh, yeah because, because um every time i um i print you know i might have a different crop so the head will be a little, little bit different you mm -hmm. know um, and um, if, I, if I go back and work from notes, then what I'll do is I'll, I'll actually note the height of the enlarger, yeah, oh. um, and the size of the paper. So I'll, I'll know, and, and I mean, there's lots of dials. I've got like a, there's a, there's a power dial, and there's, you know, the, the different contrasts, right? And each of those deduct an add. So it's worth always doing a test, test strip, even if um, you know what you're doing. Check out. Okay. Yeah, same here. Oh. I always do a test trip. But I think, how, how long have you been printing for, Thomas? I don't know, like eight oh, okay. years maybe, but not really often. <laughs> Thank you. I think a lot of people, when they first start, like, so as soon as I put a negative in, I'm set up and I know how high the enlarger is and what action I'm working at. I've got a rough idea of where I'm <laughs> starting from. And that's just come from experience. A lot of people, when they first start, they're yeah. like, Oh, how do, you, how do you know to have the aperture set to that? How do you know to start at that time? It's like, it's just practice. It's just experience. Yeah, it's just practice. Over time, mm. it's like, oh, yeah, the yeah, enlarger's yeah. really high up. I'm at F8, so I need to start at 30 seconds rather than starting at 8 seconds for my test strip. You know, it's, it's just one of those things that over time, you're like, yeah, mm. that's what I need to do. Yeah. Five or six... So, 25, 30, 40. Oh, Dan, you'll be, you'll be pleased to hear that I, uh, I actually managed to yeah. start the recording about five minutes ago. So the first time oh, hey. that you used that enlarger and got a print from it, it's actually been filmed. Oh, shit. <laughs> Hold on, let me, let, me, let, me, let me um, actually have a go. See, I can't see what I'm seeing because I've got a piece of card over most of my screen. Mm -hmm. But I've got a fairly sharp image on here. What, um, <coughs> what um, focal length lens have you got on that enlarger? On what? What lens is on the enlarger? So what? Um, it's a 28mm F2. And um, just let me check what f-stop it's on. On f right now. Um, so that means stuff is you guys because you don't know how bright my uh, my head is. Um, so let me see. It's kind of in the middle, and I'll put like forty seconds on it. Maybe thirty-five. Right. 
the thing about about this um, enlargers, what I'm doing is, um, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a um, there's an intrepid timer here, right? Yeah. yeah? So um, I'm just running the timer at the same time um, as I'm holding the light on. So we shall we'll see. We shall see. I quite like the idea of like using the same camera and lens that you take the images with as the ones that you use to print with as well. You had to be that true. And I just ruined the first film because I forgot that I left the bloody enlarger on. I tend to swear a lot when I'm printing. But it would work only like for lens, like focal lengths in the normal range, right? You couldn't like print with a tailor lens, I guess. Uh, oh, how would that work? <laughs> you might be able to. You have to have you, like, say. Yeah, you get like small prints, right? Or you have to like turn it up really high. Yeah, you have to have your the camera really high. Ah, yeah. So you're actually at the same distance that you were to yeah, the subject, yeah. right? <laughs> so that's the <that> <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. So really, you're going to want like 50 mil lens, aren't you, for doing your enlarging? Yeah. It, the thing is, right? It doesn't really matter because. Um, it's still going to reach um, reach the. Uh, I mean, it's still going to focus, right? Because it's a uh, SLR lens. Yeah. Run it. Yeah, we'll see. I just need to get, run downstairs to get like my dust dust blower thing before I put negatives in here. I'll be right back. So Dan, what do you, what, what's your, uh, how do you deal with dust? Okay. Look at this. I'm going, to, I'm going to make your video full screen, Dan, because this is exciting. The paper. Okay, so I've got no filter on here, right? I've also got no highlights over here. So this is my pointing to the post flash. Ah, highlights. <laughs> yeah. Right here. It's all coming in. Okay, I can see a gray line, which means that, you know, I can see the edge. That'll do. Not rocket science. All right, let's stop. Uh, 30 seconds. And I'll give it uh, three minutes. That'll do. I guess my red light is not as bright as that. <laughs> no, you need to get one of those like power yeah. LEDs in. That's <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, Check my drawers closed. There we go. First print from a large, not proper enlarger. That looks okay. Yeah. 
Street. That'll do. I think, like, <laughs> it's about expectations as well, isn't it, with stuff like that. It's, it's just about making a print and getting something, and it doesn't, like, right, I suppose it, it could be technically <laughs> perfect, but <clears throat> there's, no, there's no, nothing wrong with, like, a bit of vignetting in the corners because you're in larger costs. Two pounds to make that enlarger is not that light is not supposed to be for photographic enlargers, yeah. right? It's just any old, um, you know, LED light, you know, AliExpress kind of thing, right? So I picked up in uh, in Shamshay Po in a place called Athia Street, um, and it works because LED light, you know, the fossil lights work, yeah. And in fact, it's actually given quite a nice contrast. So how? Yeah. So I can. I can. I, yeah. Just thinking, like with the LED element, you could control yeah. the contrast through the LED color, or you could still use filter. You could attach um, the end of the lens filter set, Ilford filter set, couldn't you? Or you yeah. could put um, the sheet filters above. Uh, the negative or below the negative. Oopsie, wrong way. Um, yeah, I mean, actually, what I've got here, a couple of useful bits of pieces. Hang on. Right. So I've got actually two sets. I have I have two sets of uh, of filters. Even though the Kaiser um, has a color head, I've got filters cut for the Kaiser, right? Because I want to have I don't want to be fighting with the friend of the filters, right? Um, yeah. But in fact, this lovely little um, 3D printed um, uh, filter holder, right? And the idea is that this, if I twist this around, oops, that's why fix are finished, right? So, this yeah, one here. How's and, that, how's that right? attaching to that? It's, uh, it's just gripping on. It, 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 I'll, I'll show you a second. So let, let's get a like a small place. Is it okay? Got a half filter on. So look. So it slides in a little gap in here. Yeah. And you see? Do you see these? I yeah. Know. Yeah. See? Right. And oh, hey, bingo. And that's just it's like a three D. The whole thing's three D printed. Yeah. I mean, I can make one of them, but I, it came with the uh, with the set. Yeah. That's great. But so, when I need, when I need my intrepid knockoff, right? I decided that I wanted to to think. So, so my one, it, unlike the uh, original intrepid, I can put it in the um, directly in the uh, the, the front standard. Behind the lens. Yeah. Right? Um, and I have a red filter that, that I can slip down. Yeah. And I also have the perspective form that um, uh, channels, channels light from the, uh, from the inside and get it in the, uh, in the lens so I can see what messed up I'm, not, I'm at. Which obviously is not built into the standard and trusted and larger. That, um, I think the, the 35 mil LED top bit and then the filter bit, like if they yeah. could be combined into like really easy to either print or package up, like unit, I think that would be a great little product. Um, well, well, where is it? Somewhere here, I also have um, like a, you know, you know the screw-on filter sets that you have you put on the front of your camera for the lens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, you can screw one of those on the front of that and slide in your um, uh, yeah. your on that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I mean, this is a proof of concept because I'm my motivation in in, in all of this. Is or partly to help people out, right? But partly, um, I'm I'm always worried that film um, and paper will 
eventually no longer be available, right? Yeah. So, so it's my, my mission in life to, um, to popularize it, yeah? Yeah. And, um, and um, a lot of people who have said, I'm not willing to buy an enlarger because I don't have anywhere to put it, right? Yeah. Um, and I understand that. But if you could hang a, 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 an SLR off a, off a tripod, which is pretty easy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, 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 or rig something up that's, you know, kind of, um, you know, like a, a piece of wood. And, you know, you, you've got it stuck on a shelf or something, you know, with, with a magic clamp or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. If we could do that, then, um, there you go. Then, um, this is all you need. This little tiny piece of plastic. Yeah, it costs yeah. you nothing. You know, you just set it up in reverse print. What about, like, yeah, I, I agree. I think that that's a great solution for people that can't have a permanent setup or don't want <clears throat> a full setup because they're not going to do it very frequently or whatever. Um, I think the next step is, like, getting away from having to have all the trays set up. So if there was, what's, wasn't there, like, a little developing, uh, like, almost like a slot developer that you could just put the, like if you're doing it's just doing like four by five or eight by tens that you just it stood on the table and it was tiny compared to laying trays out. Um well you see, you see this thing in here, right? This yeah. tank. I have this set up so that I can pump water in here and flow water out there. Um but uh, it's basically a piece of four pieces of hang on, five pieces of acrylic that I, I, I bought off a um acrylic merchant. We have shops that do that in Hong Kong. And I just had them pre-cut to the right size. And um, I got uh, acrylic glue, which is basically chloroform, and folded the entire thing, and then ran a, a bead of, um, of uh, silicon glass on it, yeah. right? Yeah. But if you had multiple ones of those, you could do a full, like a, like a full film dip and dunk yeah. in the dark. Or... Or you set it up so so you have like a, an X-ray bar. You know, you know, you know for X-ray print, X-ray negatives, right? Oh uh, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then so so you would need at a minimum, all right. Let's say you forego the stock bar. Yeah. Right. You would need a minimum to well, uh, a developer, a fixer, and somewhere to wash. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now I've been thinking about well, can I do like a, a like a dark tent or something, right? In yeah. which case, I would probably like to have a tray so that I can see the development. Uh, you yeah. don't, you don't. It's not for you. <laughs> you. But if I, if I did that, I would, I'd like a, the the I'd like it to be clear. Yeah. So I could see one in the front developing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to be fancy and do it in red or, or anything. I just want a clear tank. The whole three thing would be clear, and then the middle one would be, yeah, yeah, top fit. Back one would be, um, would, would be a wall, or I could separate them or whatever I want to do. But it really doesn't need to be much bigger than that. No, it wouldn't, would it? Another I thing I mean is, any, is anyone that's going to use that system is probably going to like go like wash them in the kitchen or in the bathroom anyway. So your final wash would just be a case of it's just a holding tank until you then transport and give it a proper rinse under a tap, a tap, and then probably hang them in the bathroom anyway, wouldn't you, to dry? It's just a size. Has any one of you used these like machines that they do for color prints, where you just put the exposed paper in in the beginning, and then it has all the bases inside, and it has like stuff to glue the papers through? I've never, I've because seen, that I've sounds seen like them, a, but I've never used one. Okay. Yeah, I used this once, like years ago, for color printing, and it seemed like kind of magic. Like you just pour in all the chemicals in the right uh, places, and it like keeps the temperature and stuff, which you don't even need for black and white. And like something like this could be cool for people who who don't like have a room for trays and stuff. Yeah, I, I think um, another another thing I've seen is you, you know like um office inbox kind of things. We have multiple levels of tray. Yeah. Yeah. 
I've seen people do um, short trays and a system like that with a developer on the top. Yeah. Yeah. And then it goes into the second one, which is either stop or fix. And then, um, and then for wash, they just chuck it in a bucket. Yeah. The, 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 I've actually used yeah. a system like that. And the beauty of it is that your chemicals are always dripping down then. <clears throat> so your chemicals are always going in one direction. You never get any cross contamination. <clears throat> it's um, it's quite a nice tidy setup that for, for multiple trays. Uh, I was at F11 just now, and it's power. Let me take it all the way back up. Boring. Yeah, some kind of land. Ah, uh, no, this is right. So square it up. Get a sheet. You're not printing that. No, sorry. You're not printing tonight. I can't hear you. No, you're not. Did you hear that, Thomas? I no, think he was, was asking was if. Yeah. He was asking if we were going to print tonight, oh, yeah. and I actually just started like putting a negative in and doing test strips. I'm I'm not doing any printing because uh, I'm not set up for it at the moment, unfortunately. But I'm I, oh. I'm I'm set up with all the streaming stuff now, so I'm happily kind of just flipping between the cameras between you two, watching what you're doing. Hang on. It's quite good. Yeah, I guess on my side, there's actually nothing visible because the camera is so bad and the light is not really enough. Well, you can kind of see you doing something. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I, if I turn it down, can you see like the, oh, yeah, the I can table see the of that. the enlarger there? Yeah, that's great. Okay. So, Maybe I should put it there. Like I've done a few streams but on yeah. my uh, YouTube channel where I've kind of done printing sessions with people watching. And the problem is, is like when you're working by yourself, you're you're just kind of lost in your own thoughts, aren't you? So you and you can't talk to people because you've got your computer screen off. Um, so you can't chat to them on YouTube or anything. And it's just hours of kind of nothingness. Whereas with this, like with a few people doing it, there's like there's good conversation going on. Like you can. You can chat about what you're doing at the time. If we if we do this um, next time, then we really should be thinking about doing some printing as well, right? Because um, otherwise, it's just a, a podcast. Yeah. I <laughs> know. Oh, I agree. Yeah. I, I I haven't been able to set up the print there, unfortunately. But yeah, that's if if you guys are up for it, I'm really interested in in doing this in the future because I think it's an opportunity to kind of learn from each other and just chat and for other people to learn potentially as well. Yeah, definitely. I think for me, there's a lot to learn here from you. So I would definitely be up for doing this again and again. I've got a little bit of a line here on the top. I wonder what that's from. We've already learned that Dan's broken the uh, second gold of rule of dark rooms, which is no smoking in the dark room. You what? Is that the rule, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> That's the rule? No, isn't it like no eating and no smoking in the dark room? I've, and no drinking, no doubt. I'm, I'm eating and drinking. There's a difference between being in like a professional community room and being in your own dark room. Really. You can do what you like. Oh, we, we actually have <laughs> an ashtray in every corner of the room. Yeah. Here. <laughs> and it says smoking in courage. Excellent. Right. But, you know, some of us, you know, the old school guys, right? Oh, what are you yeah. Um, love it because, um, because, you know, I mean, they'll be on their own, and I have an air purifier here, right? So, so they can have, come in and be nice and, and clean smelling, yeah. right? But if they want to light up, no one's going to stop yeah. them, right? And that's quite a nice thing. So you go down to a, you know, a professional dark room, you know, 
or a, or a community place, you know, God forbid in California or, uh, or Europe or somewhere, you know, you light up a small bit of red and, and you'd be shown the door, yeah. right? <laughs> or the police would be called. All right, that's my 30 seconds. Check, um, and lights on. So what, what are the actual um, images of that you're printing at the moment? What? What are the images of that you're printing? Um, we're from a place in Hong Kong called Pai O. <coughs> it's called Fishing Village. An old fishing village mm -hmm. in Hong Kong. Um, it's not really meaningful. I want to make sure I've got no dinks and dents in the in the diffuser, right? Um, and I want to make sure that you know there's no there's no stray hairs or or ash trapped in my um <laughs> trapped in my charger somewhere, yeah. right? Uh, I mean, it's a pretty ghetto ghetto um, right? Yeah. So anything can happen. Could you do um, um and I also, could you take could you take the negative it. out and just do a print without a negative in to see if you've got any imperfections within the diffuser? I'll do that in a sec. Um and um I think I am should probably run that for about twenty seconds because I I'm getting um I'm I'm running forty second prints right now at F eleven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll probably go Gonna aim for aim for a mid turn of like a 10, 10 to twenty seconds, okay, and see see what it, maybe a bit less, maybe ten seconds. Done. Right. So Dan, do you have um? Do you basically have a timer above every tray? You just got a li little digital timer above every tray that, when you're in that step, you you trigger a timer. Well, yeah, because like for well, for example, if I, normally if I'm doing it properly, right, I'll have thirty seconds on the um on the uh, on the developer, right? Yeah. So I got a thirty second drip there. Yeah. Okay. Um, some people like the time to stop. I don't. I don't think it matters, right? But there's a thirty second here. Yeah. I got three minutes and a five minutes. I can't do a really long fix. I can do a five minute fix or I do a two or three minute fix. Yeah. I put the 30 second timer on to let me know that I've had enough that I can turn my light on. Yeah. Right? Um, over here, I've got another timer, which um, this one, 50 minutes. I use that sometimes if I'm doing a stand development. Yeah. Um, and I've got a bunch of other timers in the cupboard because they're cheap. <laughs> No, I, um, I agree. I'm using. I much prefer to have a separate timer for everything rather than like a lot of people use their phones, don't they? <clears throat> and it's all combined into one well, app or whatever. I'm just like, forget that. Just have a separate timer for each each stage. These cost about a pound or, or, or so, yeah. right? Because they're from IKEA. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I have a I have a cupboard full of them, um, and. Um, yeah, I've got this this has been triple timer here, right? Yeah. But it's a little beyond my IQ. So I've never actually figured out how to use it. <laughs> I've used one of those. It's awful, isn't it? Um it's a lovely product and I would hardly recommend it. <laughs> um if you're a bit more switched on than me, okay? I, I, I tried using one of those, and um, yeah, I just had no success with it. It, it. it logically didn't make any sense to me. Like, 
how to switch between the different times and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's so much easier just to have separate timers for them all. Yeah. And they're quite expensive as well for what it is. Like you say, those, those sheep IKEA timers are, are just the red. I mean, they're, they're... Oh, don't drop them in, the, in, in water. If you drop them in the water, <laughs> then um, the LCD go. This is, this is just RC, so I can uh, stick it up through the way. Can I have a look? Yeah, it's kind of working. They look fantastic. Yeah. Roger. Congratulations. I'm not including the camera. <laughs> um, three pounds or three US dollars worth of um, worth of ingredients put into it. And the, the print time is about an um, hour and a half, two hours. Yeah. Yeah. But if, if it was you and you didn't have a printer, you could just make something out of wood and a printer can or something, you know? Yeah. Right? So, um, you know, given the amount of effort put into it, right? Um, I think it's pretty good. No? Pretty good. Is there any way you could take your camera closer to the print so we can see some of the detail in them? All right. I, I, I'm, I'm going to turn the camera around as well oh, so cool. you get a. You better, what, what? Mm. detail in it is because the, the post flash right so if I um, if I used um, if I used uh, filters and um, you know maybe gave it some double zero yeah I'd have a better result um, and um, there's one more thing that I haven't tried that might be worth doing is um, yeah currently the um, the inside of this this box here is um is just it's just black right so if i was going to be a bit fancy then um then i just coat it with tin foil mm -hmm. uh, and the reason is, is is that the the corners um tend to you know because they're further away from the center of the bulb right um and um if i have them reflecting in from the sides i might get a bit more peripheral balance out of it yeah yeah i did i did one with um with a with a 0.3 millimeter pinhole the other night, yeah, uh, just to show that it can be done with with basically no money, right? Um, and um, and that one needed all the light I could give it. <laughs> so um, that one, yeah, I mean really, you know, 0.3. It was like a four minute exposure for that one. I needed um, I needed the tin foil, right? In fact, what, what I use for tin, instead of tin foil is I use um, it's kind of like uh, ventilation covering is basically tin foil, but self adhesive yeah. on one side. Yeah, and that height is almost exactly the right height for um, a piece to go around the outside. So all I do is I just crack this top off again, right, and then um, put the tin foil in and close it up. So if I if I decide I have real problems, that's that's how I'll fix it. Um, in fact, actually, this is working out pretty well. So, um, yeah, that might be the kind of thing I'll take on holiday next time, you know?
I, I, she, she, she had a nick. It's such a great idea, isn't it? Like you could take the camera, you could develop the film while you're there and print while you're you're there as well. Yeah, yeah. And then you could. I you, mean, it, this, this is the. If you take photos of people. You could then go and give them the prints the following day as a thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Um, it's, I, I do strange things like I, I'll do, develop all my film on the, on the road, um, always, because I've had bad experiences at Heathrow. <laughs> um, well, yeah. I think that's you know, like, like that's all... going to become more of a problem now, isn't it, with those new scanners that they've brought in? Yeah, so um, the, the, the golden rule is, if at all possible, uh, um, buy locally yeah. or get a, a shipper to send it to you where you're going to be in country yeah and then and then um and then uh you know process one rolls test and then um and then just basically develop everything in country so if, if you ship film through, with a courier do you specify to them that it's yeah. not to be x-rayed and they will stick to that rule well here's the thing right if you're ordering from you know, from Marco, or you're ordering from Camera Film Photo, or or or, or whoever does it, help it in, in the UK, yeah. right? They still got to mail it to you. Yeah. yeah? Right. So um, I'm I'm getting it with the same at the same exposure level as everybody else gets it. Yeah. Or or I make a pre arrangement with a high street store and go and buy it while in, in the country while I'm there. Right, because I I've traveled with film. I, I really don't like it. Um, um, Cuba is another place they like to X-ray everything, yeah. you know, um, and they'll X-ray it at every stop. So one time, I think I I, I went through seven airports on the way to Cuba, um, and um, it was just just Heathrow that wouldn't allow me to to uh, to hand hand check it. All right, um, but anyway, I got through. Um, it was. I think it was okay. Um, I um, I overexposed my phone, you know, I pulled it, and it, it worked out okay. And then I, but I developed everything in the country. Right. Yeah. I like I've, I've travelled with film through like yeah probably up to ten scans before developing through X-rays and stuff, and I've never had a problem at yeah. all. Um, but I have had problems, like, I got some, a few years ago I went to Australia, and I got some film developed by a lab in Australia, and they scratched my film. So I'm like, I don't trust other people, scratch, like, developing my film. <laughs> and there's no way I'm developing colour yeah. when I'm out on, on the road. My worst experience was, um, was um, going to Venice on, um, on a honeymoon. Well, not honeymoon, it was a 10th anniversary. And... Uh, Obviously, with the wife, <laughs> and um, and uh, we had booked, you know, straight through to uh, to Paris, and then we were going to get a train down to Venice. But at the last minute, they cancelled the reservation, and they they put us on a seven four seven, and they they, they sent us through Heathrow. Yeah, I mean Heathrow was never on the on the list, right? Um, I'm British anyway, so I have no passport. But they, the woman absolutely refused to hand hand search it. It had to go through, not just the scanner. But the high power scanner, which is supposedly film safe, up to whatever sixteen hundred, um, and um, the the films that were were badly affected were the BW four hundred CN, the um, chromogenic four hundred speed black and white, and it was just the classic kind of waves right. of like you know as if there's been a light loop on one, one corner of the can down through every single frame. Um, and uh, those, those photos are irretrievable, and they were some of my best. But um, <laughs> sometimes you need an excuse to explain to the wife why you didn't get any good photographs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but you know it, what I'm saying is that even even scanners that are supposedly film safe, they're not film no. safe. Um, and and um, if you're kind of happy snapping and you don't really care, and you know in the old days, you know taking. Instamatic photographs of everything. Maybe you, you don't care because you only lost a few films. But but you know if you go on a proper photographic trip, like in in Cuba, I think we went through 
I think it was 80 rolls a person. Wow. You know, it was just ridiculous. I mean, huge amounts, yeah. right? Um, uh, to lose that, you're in trouble. You're in oh, real it, trouble. Yeah, yeah, it's not, the trouble is, it's not, it's not set up for professional film photography, is it? That, that system. It's like, it used to be the norm, I guess, where people were taking film through airports and it wasn't a problem. Yeah. Now now we're the kind of the, the weird people who, who still have film and we should be using our phones like everybody yeah. else, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, and, and they go, are you a professional photographer? And you go, well, no, right? And they go, well, there you go. You don't care, right? <laughs> just, just like um, cool. then the yeah, Well, I've complained enough. I trust nobody. Um, I, I, I will try to get my film either sent there or, or you know, I'll shepherd it. I want to get my film as fresh as possible in the locale. I shoot my film and the same night I always go back to the hotel and I'll, I'll process everything. Right. Okay, so I'll come home with, with strips so of how dried are negatives. You, what chemicals are you taking or are you buying chemicals on location to develop? Well, not huge. Can't buy any any stuff. No. So what did you do? Right. Well, I, I took a big bag full of photographic stuff, and what? Well, well, partly it's because we were giving giving um, paper and and film and chemicals to the locals, right? But um, normally I will travel with um, with. Uh, I'll show you. Two. Uh, these are my two favorites, right? Uh, super grain, okay. If yeah. I'm, this is rolling super grain, and it, it, I, I, I like this because you can go down to like one to fifteen dilutions, mm -hmm. um, and um, which is so this half liter will is it half liter? Yeah, half liter will 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 go quite a long way. Yeah. Okay. Um, and um, and also if I'm doing, for example, something stupid like FC four plus and. Uh, T-Max or Tri-X at the same time in the same tank. I can do everything in the same tank and I'm not worried about it. Yeah. So, um, you know, same time. So four or five minutes, right? Um, or if, um, especially if I'm, if I'm not automatically metering, I'm trusting my eye, right? Then um, I like to use Rodinol, yeah. Rodinol for standard. Um, and um, it's pretty good. Um, there's a bit more grain. So we tend to push it a bit. So usually that saves me from my, my own mistake. Yeah. So uh, I'll bring both because if I run out of that, then this uh, 1 to 100 will last pretty much forever. And it's just about yeah. a matter of exhausting my picture. Yeah. Well, so, um, so do you have any problems taking the chemicals through customs? I've never had a problem taking care of through customs in, in my in my suitcase. And you just put yeah, you put that in your checked luggage. <clears throat> yeah. I mean I've I don't know if it's wise, but um <laughs> I've never thought about it really. Yeah, but um, you know. Yeah. Well, um, if, if, if you've never never had a problem then that bring a mercury thermometer. If what? You bring a thermometer. Do not bring a mercury thermometer. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> yeah. Um, you have to get some contact with the aircraft and then eat its way through. Well, you don't want to do that. Are you taking the chemicals in their original packaging? Yeah, sealed. Yeah. yeah, I think that like, I think if you were to get checked, that would probably be the thing that swings whether you you're allowed to take it in or not because it's in its original packaging. They can see the warning labels on it and all the, the information about it. Whereas if you're just taking it in a generic container, they might be like, what, what is this liquid? I, I don't know. I've never, I've never been questioned. Yeah. Well, I've carried crazy things on airplanes. I, I carried, um, I carried parachutes on planes before and I've had no problem with that. Okay. <laughs> and so you, you're taking, <laughs> you're taking tanks, and like negative sleeves and clips and everything as well. And you're just developing um, in the back room of it. Um, I think usually one tank of 
depending on how much I'm shooting, right? So yeah. I'll, I'll either take a um, like a three three tank or a five capacity tank, or maybe just a two. Yeah, because um, if I'm stand developing, you don't really want to stand develop two hours, two hours, two hours, or one hour, one hour, one hour. It's ridiculous, right? Um, so uh, stand, I always go for the big five one. If it, um, yeah, I bring a tank. I bring um, uh, you know, like a, a, a measuring plastic measuring cylinder. Yeah. Um, jug. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Oh, and uh, I'll bring a dog tag. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. and then film retriever. Pretty much it. I like, it's like um, it's like old school like photojournalism, isn't it? Going out, taking the photos, yeah. developing them, and then like probably faxing them or what is it, telexing them back to the uh, editorial desk. Yeah, and if I was going to do like the movies, I'd have like a string up here with like clothes pegs <laughs> be hanging in my print set, wouldn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, it's. I, I'll, I'll do things like sitting on a window or on a. Or I've got a wet wall. Yeah. So over here is, is the wet wall. Yeah. Um, and uh, so what I did was like I did different, various different ways of printing the same image. Yeah. Um, you know, I looked at the, the grain and the quality and so I can see what I'm doing. Or if I'm, I'm doing different exposures, I'll stick them all up on either the windows or the wet wall. Because um, I've got I've got vinyl on these windows, so I, you know, it's not going to not yeah, going to be a problem. I do that as well. I think it's, it's really important to be able to compare things side by side, because especially if you're looking at if you're looking at like toning differences or difference between like warmer and cooler papers, you just can't see the di in isolation. You need it relative to something else, don't you? And it's a bit of encouragement, and um, I tend to stick um, things like test strips along the along along the back here, you know. And after after a good session, the entire sink will be covered in test strips. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, this last one I didn't even bother doing a test strip, right? Because it was a similar kind of contrast, similar kind of scene, um, yeah. and they were both electronically exposed because they were both. Um, I think they were both on a Ricoh Gel One B. I, so, I get oh, um, asked yeah. that question actually quite a lot. Is can you offer, offer like if you shot a whole roll, once you've set the exposure on the enlarger for one frame, can you then just print all the other frames with the same settings on the mm -hmm. enlarger? And my answer is you can, but <laughs> you're going to get variations depending on how differently the, the frames are exposed. Like you're being the ballpark. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yes and no. And um, uh, um, for example, I, when I advance the film from one frame to another frame, I can see if there's a major difference in 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 the amount of amount of light that's coming yeah. through or the contrast of the scene. Um, and um, I just couldn't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. um, so, um, it's only eight by ten. If it was uh, if it was a serious size print. You know, some kind of Dave Allen science print. I, I yeah, I absolutely would yeah. uh, do a hundred test strips. Yeah. You know? So do you do do you do uh, test strips in uh, different areas within the print before doing a large print? Um, it, 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 it depends. <clears throat> I think that my golden rule is about the area. So, for example, if I'm using an eight by ten, I cut my my paper into six strips. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, if I was doing like a like a like a double size print, I would want two strips from different areas, you know. Yeah. Or if, if it was a challenging exposure, um, but um, if I if I had uh, you know a kind of that size picture, I'd probably do about four or five interesting spots yeah. where I I need to figure out what I was doing. Yeah, but, but there's no point doing 100 strips, so you may as well just have two pages. Right. For this thing across the roll, what I found what really helps is like doing contact sheets, because yeah. then you see, like, if you have just scans from your negatives, it doesn't help because you have like different like settings on, on the different scans. But if you have one contact sheet, 
then you you can anticipate the differences between uh, yeah, one yeah. frame to the next and then you can already guess okay i need to go a bit longer on this yeah. one or shorter or whatever yeah because you know, like with the contact sheet you can see relative to each frame what the differences yep. are you yeah know, right. with, with your individual scans you're compensating for exposure of each frame aren't you so I, yeah. I stopped doing contact sheets because I was scanning them anyway. So I just thought, well, what, what's the point? Because I was, I was using like a digital contact sheet basically to pick which frames I was printing. But actually, like, I made a contact sheet the other week and I've forgotten how great it is to actually have that as an object and select images from that um, compared yeah. to doing it digitally. And also, that, for, I, if you want I to get an idea. No, go ahead. Sure. Go ahead. I was just saying also for like the contrast filters, it helps. Like you get in, like I do the contact sheets without any filter, and then you get an idea on, on the contrast of the pictures. Yeah. And then you know already, okay, I try this with some yellow maybe or some magenta. And this you also don't have with like scans because they the contrast on digital is totally different. Yeah. Mm. But um, yeah, so for this this series, I did a contact sheet. I, and I do remember they're all similarly exposed. Yeah. Yeah. I want to print that that here, but I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to do that test that you asked for. Remember you asked for that um, that uh, blank blank sheet test. Right? Oh yeah. So I'm going to do like a ten second. Guys, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to have to go. Um, it's uh, it's food time. Oh, why don't we wind up here? <laughs> we can we can wind up. We can we can we can close it off yeah, here. But, well, like I said, you, you guys carry on if you want, but um, I'm going to have to shut down all the streaming stuff because I've, I've got to go. It's, it's food and bedtime for our little one. No, that's cool. Cool. I'll, I'll, I'll um, we'll get it back in touch over DMs and stuff, right? Yeah, I'll um. Sounds good. Once I've shut all this down, like I said, I've been recording it for probably about an hour now, I think. So I'll send you a link to the YouTube, and we can decide whether we're going to put it out there. But like, I think this is brilliant. I think it's like. Like I say, I've tried doing this solo, and it's pretty dull, I think, for viewers. Whereas I think if you've got a few people involved, yeah. printing stuff, you can talk about problems you're having with certain prints, ask questions about what everyone's doing. I think it's, it's got huge educational value to it. So, yeah, I'm well up for it again. Yeah. Uh, even if it's not recorded, it's just it's nice chat. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> well, it's great to meet you both. <laughs> Take yeah, care. Yeah. See you soon. Bye. See you.